So I have never ever attempted to do amigurumi because I felt pretty intimidated from it since it's a realm of crochet that I've never really stepped in before but I want to be able to venture into more creative crochet like learning how to do different shapes and things like that so today is the day where I learn how to do amigurumi. I'm gonna attempt about two to three things I know for the first thing I'm gonna work with scrap yarn since I've never done it and I'll probably make a lot of mistakes. And then when I get the hang of it, I'm gonna go to the store and get some plushy yarn so I can make some cute little plushies. Since I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm gonna go to my favorite teacher, YouTube. Okay, so I have the yarn that I'm gonna be learning on. I have my five millimeter crochet hook and I have YouTube pulled up where I'm going to look at these two videos and hope I can learn something. I mean, so far it's pretty simple. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I just haven't gotten to anything complicated yet because this is the beginning. It, the one thing that, that, that makes it so intimidating is like there's very specific things that you have to do for amigurumi and how do people figure that out like how do you figure out like okay if i do two single crochet and then one increase and then i repeat that for five times how, how do you know that that's gonna make a ball for you like i never understood that and that's why i never attempted because i was like how would i figure like if i wanted to make my own plushy pattern or something like that how do you figure that out so this is what I have so far. It's looking kind of cute. Um, the lady in the video, she was saying that um, it's good to like stagger your increase sections. So instead of making the increase go into the same part of it every single time, um, it's good to like put it to a different stitch. I don't know if I'm making sense. Hi, I'm back. Okay, so another new thing that I learned is the in invisible decrease. So basically, oh, by the way, this is what I have so far. It's looking really exciting. Um, so basically, to make an invisible decrease, you go into the front loops and decrease normally instead of the instead of doing the entire thing so that it doesn't show on the other side. And I th that, that makes so much sense because I remember when I was trying to decrease on one project, the decreases just looked, it just made the, the whole thing look really bad. And I was like, how are people making these perfect pieces when, they, when they're doing like the decrease part? And this is why. I'm showing this in the worst way possible, but I'm just putting my hook into the front stitches like this, the front loops and then I just decrease normally. And that's it. Okay, so I have a lot of uh, waist yarn and I always make sure to keep it because I always wanted to do amigurumi, but I just haven't gotten to that until today. So that's why I have so much, but I'm gonna be using this as stuffing for my projects just so like the yarn isn't actually going to waste all i have to do is just stuff it inside so all i'm doing is just literally throwing <laughs> some random yarn inside i guess it does make sense to take the scrap yarn and mix it in with cotton or the stuffing because it can like if you see it can kind of show the color of the yarn inside but i mean i'm i'm not too pressed about it at the moment and I'm sure that if you're working with smaller yarn, like I'm using a weight four yarn and a five millimeter hook and the in the tutorial, she's using a smaller yarn and a smaller hook. So I'm sure that it wouldn't show because it makes the stitches a lot tighter. All right, I think that's good for now. And I'm gonna finish the last row and then show you the result. Okay, so I just sewed my tail into every stitch and I think all I have to do is just pull it and it's closed this is where i started working and this is where i finished and i think i am going to just make this the bottom to poke this in random places i officially have a ball oh my gosh okay 
Um, I don't think I stuffed it enough because there's some places that are kind of dented a bit. I thought I put too much in there, but apparently I didn't put enough. All right, so I officially am an expert at Amikurumi now. So I think it's, mm, I'm gonna watch one more video and then I think I will be ready to figure out what exactly I wanna officially make. Okay, so I just finished watching this one video where it's basically showing you why um, you're supposed to stagger the increases and everything, which is why, like when I said earlier, I was a bit confused about how people figure out um, where to put the decreases and everything. And this video explained it a lot better so I can understand it. And um, it also tells you how exactly to make the ball in particular. But if you want me to be honest, I just wanna go ahead and get to the fun part. And I think that I wanna make a bunny. I just purchased a bunny pattern to make a really fluffy bunny, amigurumi plushie, and hopefully I can do that. Um, I was thinking about trying to make my own, but I, I just don't think I'm there yet. So I'm gonna follow this pattern and see if I could actually create something. And then maybe one day I can, you know, create my own pattern. Okay, so this is the pattern that I purchased from Tracy Crochet's Co for only $7.50. And this is what the bunny should turn out to be. And now <laughs> this is my uh, drawing as like a little template so I can figure out how exactly I want my bunny to look like. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play around and figure out colors that I want or if I want it to have any clothes or hats or anything, uh, so yeah. So with the bunny designs, I wasn't really in the best creative state, especially when I already saw how cute the bunnies were on the pattern photo. So I decided to go with some overalls and hats for the bunnies and maybe even a cute scarf. Here are the designs that I kind of decided on. Like there's nothing going on here, but I kept in mind that I've never done this before. So I didn't want to do anything dramatic. Like I didn't want to put make a whole outfit just so I can't make it in reality. Um, so I kept a couple of them plain and just did like a tiny little accessory on the side, maybe add some bows onto the ears. And then I did add like that little um, overalls that was on the pattern, but the pattern doesn't include a tutorial for the overall. So I'll, I'll have to figure it out for myself, but it looks like it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, and then for this one, I thought it would be cute to add like a little scarf and then these have little bucket hats. So I am going to head to the store and hopefully they have some yarn that is the equivalent to the one on the pattern and is in the colors that I decided on for my bunnies. Um, but yeah. Also, I bought these a while ago uh, in case I ever decided to start Amigurumi. So I already have different eyes. Um, I just purchased these from Amazon. Okay, so I found the blanket yarn. Um, it's $12 for this big thing. I don't think that's bad at all. Um, so these are all the colors I have to choose from. I'm not seeing any brown for my brown bunny, um, but I see some of the beige. Uh, white and then some gray purple and then pink okay so i just got back from the store and the second i put the yarn down i remembered that i didn't buy any cotton and i know i said i was going to use my um my scrap yarn but i did want to mix it together but i think i'm just gonna have to strictly only use my scrap yarn because i didn't get any cotton i bought three of these um brunette blanket yarn in the color vintage white um, because this is going to be the base for all of the bunnies i bought this uh gray one because i i want to make like a totoro version of it i got this pink one this blue one and this orange one so I think I'm gonna attempt to make a total of three bunnies 
um, each for one of my friends. And hopefully they come out. I really, really want them to come out. Before I get started though, I'm gonna make some food. This video is sponsored by Green Chef, a CCOF certified organic company that provides meals with a variety of organic ingredients for a multitude of diets and lifestyles. They offer many keto and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free meal options. Green Chef makes cooking easy so you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious home-cooked meals which is good for me because I'm pretty awful when it comes to cooking food that actually tastes good. Green Chef also introduces you to new ingredients and flavorful dishes that support a healthy lifestyle. Okay so right now I'm gonna be using their vegetarian meal kit and there's a couple of options. I can do a kale and bean stuffed peppers. I can do a Thai snap pea and peanut curry, or black bean flantas. I personally love curry and I kinda wanna do the curry, but I do wanna ask my boyfriend what he wants. There's the Thai snap pea curry, uh, black bean flantas, or kale and bean stuffed peppers. Peanut. It <laughs> okay. My boyfriend doesn't like peanuts, so I'll, I'll eat this one by myself and I'll be making the black bean flantas. I accidentally ripped the page, but it's okay. So the meal kit comes with the little recipe right here that's really easy to follow and takes only 30 minutes to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that because I'm hungry. I'm still a beginner in the kitchen, so excuse my techniques while cooking, but making this dish was actually really easy and fast. I wanted to cook it before my boyfriend went to work, and I was surprised to see how little time I actually spent cooking the meal. A lot of the flavors in the meals are inspired by international cuisines, and they offer premium ingredients and sustainably sourced produce. Green Chef also provides pre-made and pre-measured sauces, dressings, and spices to give you more chef-curated flavor in less time. If you if you want to enjoy Green Chef meals of your own, you can use my code ECOSHUN60 to get 60% off and free shipping. Go to greenchef.com for more details. Okay, so I just finished cooking my food. Here is what it looks like. It looks really, really good. Um, I'm surprised at how easy it was to make this, but the real thing is how it tastes. So I'm going to taste it. It's what you would expect from a kale salad. Um, I am a huge salad person. So this salad could, could have been the whole meal, honestly. Now I'm gonna try the little fruit buns. These are actually like really, really good. And I think I did a good job. Now, I always say everything's good. So we have to ask my boyfriend how he thinks of it cause that could be a different story entirely. Here is your food, sir. Thank you. Thank you, chef. Oh, thank you, chef. Okay. What is this? What do we have today? We have, uh, give me, give me, give me one second. No, no, Wait, I have to check. <laughs> uh, okay. So today we have a black bean flotta. I've <clears throat> a black bean flotta with some guacamole, some vegan chipotle mayonnaise and a kale salad garnished with olive oil, uh, tomatoes, onion and some seeds okay okay pretty good <laughs> that's the verdict i give it a i give it nine mihas out of ten i mean sorry nine uh ecos out of ten <laughs> am i am i chopped or am i going to the next round you make it to the next round. <laughs> You're so corny. Yeah, I can't be corny. Yeah, you can. But is it good though? You like it? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's actually really good. All right, cool. If you can tell, I'm going to be in the next season of The Bear with Jeremy White. Yeah. Don't don't I look like I, I could be the, the black girl's sister or something? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. Do be in the menu. I am not gonna be in the menu. <laughs> that is not happening. Again, for delicious Green Chef meals of your own, you can use my code ECOSHUN60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Go to greenchef.com for more details. Again. Hey, hey, hey. Where are you going in short hand? 
Making the first bunny was pretty normal, I think, besides, you know, starting it. While making it, I was watching Endgame to track my time since it's a three hour film. I, I just started the first part of the pattern and I'm realizing that I might have to go a lot slower than I usually do because the yarn is a tiny bit hard to work with in in the context of me seeing the stitches that I'm doing so in order to not mess up and just be really careful with it I'm gonna just go slow and hope for the best after getting used to the yarn working the bunny actually became pretty simple so far I have the legs of the first bunny um so far it's going good I think towards the end before I attach the head to the body, I think I'm going to turn it inside out because I don't like how the stitches are looking on the outside, but on the inside it looks more neat and uniform. So I think I'm going to turn it inside out before I stuff it and then attach the head. But yeah, it's looking good so far. I'm trying to stick to the stitch count that the pattern says, but I'm off by one stitch. Originally I was off by three stitches so I added my own decrease so that I can try to get back to where the pattern was. Okay so so far I have this right now. Um, it's making me pretty excited honestly and for reference um, I'm watching Endgame right now and I am I started this when I clicked play and it says I'm in an hour and 18 minutes in the movie so so far this took an hour and 18 minutes or so I've been stop starting and stopping, but around that time frame. So this is what it looks like inside out. You see how neater it is than the other one, if you can remember what it looked like. Finally, it was time to stuff the first part of the bunny. I had a lot of scrap yarn saved from the moment I began to crochet for the first time because I didn't want to just throw them away and I'm glad I kept all my scraps since it honestly saves money on cotton stuffing. I think stuffing the pieces is my favorite part of the whole amigurumi process, I think but I could just be saying that because I'm finally getting rid of all my scrap yarn. This kind of looks like that lemon from Adventure Time. <laughs> uh, hopefully when I stuff it, it's not as pointy, but I just added the safety eyes onto it, and I have these backs that I'm just gonna place on the back of it. How do you put these on? I have the safety eye and you put it inside the yarn, first like like that and then on the inside you just push this little brown part onto it after the head and the body was stuffed i worked on the other pieces of the body and finally sewed it all together the sewing process was mainly just me guessing and hoping that i was doing it right since the pattern didn't exactly say how to sew it it only mentions where to sew but the sewing process was fun it felt like i was building up a snowman or something you guys, I have to show something. I just gave birth to a beautiful bunny. Her head is a tiny bit crooked, but nothing is perfect in life. And that just makes her unique and beautiful the way she is. Look how cute. Okay, first, she is a lot bigger than I thought she was gonna be. Like, I didn't realize how big um, the bunnies of the pattern were gonna be, um, but I really like it. I could do this. And it's so soft and cuddly. Her ears probably made, are probably the reason why her head is crooked or I just sewed it on wrong. But she's done and I don't think I can give her away. I'm so sorry to my friends. I'll make you your own, but this one is just for me. Um, I might make her a hat, I don't know. I'm gonna call it a night right now because I'm kind of tired and I, I'm a little bit sick, so my throat is hurting. Oh, my bunny. I think, I, I, I was trying to think of a name, but the only thing that was coming to, to mind is Minnie. M-I-N-N-I-E, so her name is Minnie. Okay, so tomorrow I think I'm going to make two more depending how long it takes. This one took about four to five hours to do. So I'm gonna try to make two more tomorrow and then see what else I can make for Amigurumi.
So we will see you tomorrow. Hello, so today is the second day of my amigurumi endeavors. Um, I just started half of the body of my second bunny and I'm contemplating if I should make a third one. I know I said I was gonna make three yesterday, um, but I'm still like, should I make three or should I make one more and then try something else? Because I wanna see all the different things that I can make with the patterns that I find online and just to like develop my skills and hopefully I can make my own pattern one day. So I think this will be the last bunny that I make. Hi, today is actually day three of the process of trying amigurumi for the first time. And I actually finished my second bunny. This is what she looks like. Um, she's a lot better than the first one in terms of the stuffing. I stuffed her up so much more than the first time. Um, I think I put her head on crooked the same way I did the other one, but it's it's it stands up more than the other one. Um, and I also added this hat. Um, this hat, I added these two bunny ears, be or these, yeah, these two bunny ears on top, um, because I kind of based her off of someone I just met in New York. She owns a record, a record store. She owns a yarn shop and um, I got to meet her and she said she's gonna send me a bunch of mohair yarn and I was like, that's so sweet. And she, she was wearing this hat for the first day that I met her and then the next day when I hung out with her um, and she was wearing this hat on both days with these and so while I was making the bunny I was like what if I kind of make it like her in a way and I'm still contemplating if I should give it to her because I get too attached to what I make which is not a good thing at all. I also attempted to make overalls for my other bunny, my first bunny see um there's no overall tutorial on the pattern so i had to just try and figure it out but i just kind of went with the same pattern as making the legs and the body and then i just um added a couple of rows in the middle and then a chain and then did the same in the back the only thing is i kind of increased too much on the sides so now the overalls are kind of big but I think it gives it character. So far, I've made two giant bunnies. They're huge. They take about, I wanna say four to five hours each. And because of that, I don't wanna make a bunny today. So I found this duck amigurumi tutorial on YouTube by Crafter Frog. And I think it looks really cute and it's small and easy to do. So I'm just going to do this one as my last amigurumi project. Making the duck was an absolute breeze, mainly because it was tiny in comparison to the bunnies, but it was quick and easy. The only part I had trouble with was the feet, but that's because I was becoming kind of impatient as I was realizing that I wasn't actually having fun creating the duck. It was easy, but it wasn't really enjoyable, if that makes sense. Now I have here to reveal my duck <laughs> um he was pretty easy to make the only thing i kind of struggled with was the the feet and then i kind of just went against the tutorial and just did it how i did it and you know it's a little lopsided uh especially in the eyes but it's a duck it's a cute little duck and now he has his moms here with him take care see don't talk to me or my sons ever again all right so i have learned a lot and about myself and about amigurumi in this little adventure that i have a couple of things the first thing is that i don't think amigurumi is for me mainly because i like when i crochet and knit i like to just go like that but with amigurumi, you really have to pay attention to where you're increasing, how many stitches you have in your stitch count, and just all the tiny little details that you don't really need when you're creating clothes. I don't really like that because if I'm making a sweater, all I have to do is go back and forth. And like, I, all I have to do is pay attention to how many rows I'm making. And half the time, all you have to do is just make as many rows as you think is good and then count it up and like okay i need more rows or i need less rows then you can take it off or put it back on 
it's 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 a bit more complex than making wearables but at the same time it's very fun and you can create any type of creature that you want um another thing is these are both the same exact type of yarn but this when whenever i'm working with the colors that i purchased it's just really hard to work with. I don't know if it's the fact that I was using a smaller hook, but that shouldn't have been a problem if using the smaller hook was perfectly fine with this white yarn. I feel like I'm only gonna do amigurumi if I'm making gifts for friends and stuff like that. But besides that, I probably won't venture into the amigurumi world just cause it's not really for me. I, I like working at a specific pace and having to constantly look at the pattern was kind of annoying. It's okay to have aspects in different um, parts of your hobby or your craft or your job that you don't like but you still love the overall act of doing it like for example in drawing you probably hate painting or you can't stand digital art you prefer traditional art or you're just not that great at illustration but you love abstract art you know it just it depends like there's always something that you're not gonna enjoy. There's always something that you will enjoy, or there's something that you're just not gonna be skillful at more than this, but it's still in the same realm. And with crochet, I think I'm gonna give Amigurumi a hard pass. Um, it's very cute, but I would probably just only do it if I'm making gifts for friends or if I wanna get rid of a bunch of scrap yarn because this was full in the beginning of the video and now this is all of the scrap yarn that I have left. But at the end of the day, I tried and learned something new, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Here are some close-ups of the bunnies that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Thank you again to Green Chef for sponsoring this video. If you want your own meal kit, you can again use my code ECOSHUN60 to get 60% off and free shipping. Go to greenchef.com for more details. Thanks for watching. Bye!